like a pay, like you give a baby a pacifier. That's not the real thing. It has no substance in it. But when you cut off his influence, when you cut off his influence, you're quenching the flesh. Whenever you will not give God, give him the right to use your body to say what he want to say, how he want to say it, when he want to say it, where he want to say it, and to whom he want to say it. You're cutting off his influence in those lives. And see, I'm not going to be guilty of that. Wherever God tell me to go and whatever God tell me to do and whatever he tell me to say, I'm going to do it. And, and um, that doesn't have to become your passion, see, because cause sometimes we look at people, we look at people and we'll think they have that passion and that drive to be used by God. I have that, that the passion that I have is for God to use this vessel the way he want to use it. That's my passion. I don't want to be in his way. Come on, I don't, I don't want to be in his way. I want to make sure that I'm not the stumbling block. I'm not the one that's disallowing. So if he say, go over here and do that, go down the street and do this, say this to this person, say that to that person, whatever, whatever it is he's instructing, I want to make sure that I'm not, I'm not hindering that. I don't want to be a hindrance to God. You, you understand what I'm saying? I don't want to be that hindrance or that stumbling block. You see, that's my passion. My passion is, God, do what you got to do. do. Do it. Do it. Do it. If, whatever you got to do. And, and, and you know what? When you really get that, when you really got the real passion, see, this, this is what distinguishes it. Because in order for, for God to do what he wants to do through you, it may cost you some things in the flesh. And sometimes he'll let you know what it'll cost you. He'll let you know some, you're going you're gonna to lose some things in the flesh. I'm going to strip some things in the natural from you. Glory to God, in order for me to do this or do that, it's going to cost you something. It's, or it's going to put some discomfort on flesh in some way. He'll let you know that up front just to see if you're going to do it. Or you're going to do it now. Now that you know it's going to cost something. Now that you know that it, it's going to take you out of your comfort zone. Will you still obey? He'll let you know. See? And my passion is this. I don't ever want, I don't want God to tell, show, he can show me, glory to God, okay, if you go, if you go down there, if you go back to Jamaica, they're going to kill you. But I, I need you to go. I'm going. My passion is not to be a hindrance. My passion is to obey God. Not to exalt Mary Banks, because he just let Mary Banks know you're at the end of your days. <laughs> you know, he would have let me know that I'm at the end of my days. But that, but my passion is to obey. It, what, what good would it do me to live another 10 years in disobedience? Ha having, having disobeyed. Huh? Just like Israel did. He told them to go, to, go, go, go into the promised land. They talking about this, they, they send spies over there and talking about, well, yeah, but it's giants over there. And then two years later, they decided they would go. And God said, no, you didn't go when I told you to go. So you won't be going at all. So those guys, every, every one of them died in the wilderness. Stayed out there 38 more years and died. The kids went in. They couldn't, they wouldn't even, they, they forfeited that right. So every time we deny Christ, we walk in a spirit of antichrist. What am I saying? Am I saying that the devil comes in? No. You become like him. He don't come in. He can't get in here. But you become like him. You take on his mindset. You take on his attributes. He's antichrist. He quenches Christ. He does, he does not want Christ to operate. And so when, when we don't allow Christ to operate, we take on a mind of Antichrist. Are you hearing God? Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you learning? Amen. So we're not in the flesh, but we're in the spirit. Do we have that? Do, are we getting that? I'm going to drive that home, saints. I'm going to keep I'm drilling you on that now. Amen. If the spirit of God is in you. And if he's not, then scripture say you're not a his. 
You're none of his. Look at Galatians 5 and 25. What does it say, Jim? Galatians 5, 25. Mm -hmm. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Now he's saying if we live in the spirit, if we live in the spirit, then we ought to walk in the spirit. Now notice what he's saying. He's saying you live right here in the Holy Ghost. This is where you live at. He said, now, if you're living right here in the Holy Ghost, then you ought to be in submission to God. You ought to be in submission to the Holy Ghost because that's where you live. You ought to be in submission. We ought to be willing to obey him, right? You got that? You ought to be willing to obey him. So what is happening if I'm living in the spirit, but I'm not walking in the spirit. What's going on? I live right here. I'm in the Holy Ghost, baptized, submerged in him, buried in Christ. You would think that it wouldn't be any problem for me to walk in the spirit. I want to share something with you. I'm trying to find another scripture here. Glory to God. Oh, I know a good one. Um, the new man. Find me that scripture. Will we put him on? I want to show you something. I want to, I, want to, I want to show you how to connect these darts here. You guys can sit a minute. I want to show you how to connect these darts. Somebody find the scripture? Colossians 3. Ephesians 4. Let's go to that one. Let's go to that one first. We we'll go to one in Ephesians first, and the other one is in Colossians, I think. Three. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to the one in, in uh, Ephesians 4, and let's start up here at the... Um, oh, let's see. Let's start up here at um, the 17th verse. Ephesians 4 and 17. Mm -hmm. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. Okay, you know what I want you to do, Bishop? Back up all the way, let me put this in in perspective. Back up to the 15th verse. Ephesians 4 and 15. Uh -huh. But speaking the truth in love uh -huh. may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ. Okay now we know Christ is the head of the body right? Okay and this scripture is saying that he gave us he gave the church he gave the church apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, yes. for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith and to the stature of the, of the fullness of the man Jesus Christ. Amen? So the fivefold ministry was given to us to build us up or to bring us to maturity in Christ, to a matured Christ. Amen? To bring us to the to that state of a matured Christ, that that matured Jesus that walked the earth, glory to God. We're supposed to come to that. So because when we got saved, now we were babes. We didn't know anything, right? We didn't know anything. But now, glory to God, we've come to a place through teaching. We're supposed. To, that's what the the fivefold ministry is supposed to do. It's supposed to teach the saints. The apostles are supposed to set the boundaries of the faith, 
pour the mystery of Christ into the church. The pastors are supposed to take that word and piecemeal it, take it and, and give it to the congregation. The teacher is supposed to piecemeal it. The evangelist is supposed to take it out and compel them to come. And the prophet is supposed to confirm it. So all of those gifts were given just to build God's house. Build him a people. Are, are you hearing God? Amen. Amen. So now, according to this, according to this, when we grow up in the Christ, we'll speak the truth in love. Hmm? We'll speak the truth in love. Glory to God. You know that, let me just put a little, stick a little pin right there. Glory to God. Uh, a man said to me one time, before I got in the church, I was a businesswoman, and this, this man said to me, I'll never forget this. I keep telling y'all this, because somebody's going to get a hold of it after a while. A man said, he, I, I was collecting my money from him. He owed me some money. And uh, I was collecting, the, I, he came and paid me. And we was, got into a conversation, and he just casually said something. He said, yeah, Miss Thomas, you love money. I was the biggest devil you ever want to see. But I knew something about that scared the daylights out of me. Because I remember when I did go to church, I heard the preacher say something about money was the root of all evil. Woo! That thing scared me. That thing scared me. When that man said, and I was a devil. But that thing scared me. Dr. Kelly. He said, you love money, Miss Tom. He said, yeah, Miss Tom, you love money. I thought about that thing. I said, oh my God. He right. <laughs> I didn't say it to him, but I sure said to myself, that man is right. And when he left, and we just, you know, he continued on with his conversation. I don't know what else that man said after that. I didn't hear nothing. All, I, all my mind was on, you love money. God going to kill you. You going to hell because you love money. That's all I can think about. You love money. You going to hell because God done said it's the root of all evil and you love it. Oh, my God, that thing bothered me. Oh, whoo. Glory to God, my heart just went to palpitating. And, I mean, I was a sinner, saints. But that thing about, because see, I met God when I was nine years old, and I, 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 was, I, I, I knew that preacher had preached that thing. Glory to God. And I'm like, God, the love of money. So when he said that, even as a sinner, as a sinner, I knew it was the truth. I knew it was the truth. There was nothing, I had no rebuttal. What, what am I going to come back with? You know, I could, you know, I can sit there and make a case or, you know, but it was a, would have been all a lie because it was the truth. I loved money. <laughs> Hello. And when you love money, it manifests. I don't care who you are. It manifests. If you love money, it manifests. Amen. And this devil, this other devil, because both of us were devils. <laughs> <laughs> the devil know the devil. <laughs> Amen. So he was talking about what was his. That devil was pointing out the devil in me. <laughs> Amen. Because I had his attributes in me. And that thing bothered me. That thing bothered me, saints. That thing bothered me. Because it was the truth. It was the truth. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Let me, let me, let me just, let me give you a, 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 something that may help you get to heaven. When somebody says something about you, if it's the truth, it might hurt your feelings. It might embarrass you. But as far as God is concerned, your feelings and your embarrassment are insignificant. All God is dealing with is, is it the truth? Is that right, prophetess? Amen. All God is dealing with is, is it the truth? Hmm? When Jesus said to those apostles, he said, he said, Get behind me because you, you always savor the things that pertain to men and not those things that pertain to God. Then when he looked at the apostles one day and said, oh, ye of your little faith, your, your perverse generation, how long must I 
suffer you. I'm sure that hurt them guys' feelings. <laughs> they, you know, they the man. They with him. You know, we the man. We with the man. And he rebuked them in front of the whole multitude. Tell my why couldn't why? Tell my, the man told him. The man walked up there and say, "Your your your disciples couldn't cast the demon out. Your disciples." Your disciples. <laughs> <laughs> your your people. The one that, that you, you claim you gave power, they couldn't get him out. And Jesus turned right around and looked at, looked at those disciples and said, you perverse generation. How long must I suffer you? Huh? Then they're going to sneak around behind, his back, behind the back of the people and say, uh, why couldn't we cast him out? <laughs> he said, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief, because of your pride. My daddy done took the power that I gave you from you. Because he gave him power over all the power of the enemy. He didn't say some of it. He said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And they had been in towns, casting out demons, doing some of everything in his name. Now suddenly they can't cast this one out. Why? Because they had gotten exalted. And if you read those first, those chapters leading up there from the third up to the tenth chapter, you'll find out that you see the areas where their pride was exalted. They were exalted. Oh, here come this woman. She, she crying after us. The woman ain't said nothing about them. The woman said, Jesus. My, my daughter's sick. It wasn't studying them. But they, they think they so much now. Somebody crying, crying out for help, and they think, oh, she just want to get to us. Pride. Pride. And right where they did it at, Jesus rebuked them. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. So when I, let me tell you something. If God say something about you, or if a drunk man say something about you, honey, don't deal with the man drunk. You, can, you, you want to make a case called the man drunk. And if he start cussing you, don't make a case because he cussing. Don't, don't point the finger at the cuss word. Is it the truth? Is it the truth? That's what you got to deal with. Is it the truth? Hallelujah. See, I, 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 learned, I learned one thing I learned never to do. Don't lie to me. Amen. I ain't going to lie to me. You, I might have told you a lie, but I ain't going to tell me now. <laughs> come, come on. I'm not going to lie to myself now. I might lie to you, but I, <laughs> glory to God, I ain't, I'm not going to tell me a lie. <laughs> glory to God. Because I, I, if I tell me a lie, I'm going to end up a lunatic. <laughs> Praise, amen. Glory to God. So if God, if, if, if anybody says something to you, whenever you hear the truth about yourself, I don't care how it come, that's God sending it. I don't care what form it come in. That's God sending that truth to you. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's God sending. Remember David? When, when Nabal cussed him out. I'm not giving you no, no provisions. I'm not giving you no supplies. You old bloody man. David's soldier said, let me go cut his neck off. David said, don't touch the man. Don't you hear God? Don't you hear? That's God. God put those words in his mouth. Because David knew he was a bloody man. He was going to kill somebody and took their wife. It was the truth. I don't care what you're doing now, Mr. David, but you are a bloody man. It's the truth. You want to build God a temple, but why did God say you can't build it? Because you got blood on your hand. So the man was just echoing what God was saying. Are you hearing God? So deal with whether it's the truth or not. Amen. Because if you can't deal with the truth, you know what you are? Carnal. If you can't deal with the truth, that means you're just still carnal. You're carnal. You're not spiritual. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? See, carnal, spiritual people, when they hear the truth, they don't care how it come. 
Glory to God. Because they want to be better. And, and they recognize, see, spiritual people recognize God when he's talking. They don't care who he's talking through. But spiritual people can hear his voice no matter how he come. Come on, somebody. He said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep, the goat don't hear him. Because the goat too busy trying to and butt up against something. And finding fault and finding a way to do this and finding this and finding that. Instead of dealing with what is God really saying right here? What is God really doing right here? That's what the sheep does. The sheep listen for God. Are you hearing him? Are y'all hearing him? Praise you, Jesus. Okay. Just some, just some, some little, little foundational stuff. Amen. Now, where were we? We're trying to find out about this new man here, right? Glory to God. Read, read Bishop. Where you at? We at 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. Uh -huh. According to the effectual workings and the measure of every part, make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Uh -huh. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye and forth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. Okay, now listen to what he's saying here. Glory to God. He said, I don't want you to walk after the vanity of your own mind. You know why? Because look at the 16th verse here. Look at the 16th verse. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint does what? Supply. Now, now see, this is where we get in trouble at. Some of us get in trouble right here because God has compacted us with something that we're supposed to supply to the body. Whatever gifting we have, whatever knowledge we have, hello, God gave it to us. Is that right? But God gave us the wisdom and the knowledge, even those things that, 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 even that wisdom and knowledge that we had before we got saved. We brought that into salvation. Isn't that right? There were some talents and gifts and things that we had before salvation. Amen. But when we came into this, God now put an anointing on our lives and said, everything that you got in you is for my body. It's not for you just to have a comfortable life. It's for my body. And see, many people are going to, to miss heaven, sadly. They're going to miss out on their salvation by the sin of omission. This is scripture. This, the sin of omission because they would not supply the body with what they were compacted by God with to supply. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And see, remember, remember the, the, the servant that he had given a talent? He had, he had given him one and then gave somebody two and somebody else five. And that one he gave one talent to didn't do anything with it. He buried it. Now watch this. When, when the Lord come back now, see, this is, this, this, I learned this. Connect these dots here. I learned this. I learned this. Paul said, we are not, you know, we're not, we're not boasting in another man's measure. Remember that? Also, we're not boasting in another man's measure, but, and we're not, we're not picking up another man's work. We, we, we've come this measure, this is the measure God gave us. I've come, I've, I've come all the way to you myself. I didn't come pick up something somebody else had done. I preached you out. Let me tell you something, saints. If God give you, this is what he's trying to tell us with that, that, ta that talent, that man with that one talent. If God give you that talent, if he give you a gift, and you do what that man did, bury it. Notice now, when, the, when his master came back, he gave his master the talent. He, he had that one talent, he still had that one talent. And the master was angry because he said, well, where's the increase? You should have put my money out to usury and be, I would have gotten some interest on it. Where's the increase? Where, 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 he said, I knew you were a hard man and, and you know, sowing, reaping where you don't sow. And he said, you knew that in the beginning. He said, you, what, what, what? He said, you just slowful. 
See what he said, and you know what he said to him? You know what the man said to Jesus? He said, so I, I, I'm, I'm giving you what belonged to you. This is what you gave me and this is what I got. So I'm giving it back to you. That is so, and you know what, you know what he did with that servant? <laughs> he put him into, he said, take him and, get, and let him have his part with unbelievers. Put him in the fire with unbelievers. Let me tell you something, saints. When God compacts you with gifting, don't you do what you want to do with it. You do what he tell you to do with it. Because you can take that gift and you can do everything you want to do and still don't please God. You got to do what God tell you to do. Not what you done dreamed up of doing. Not what you done had all your, your whole life dreamed of doing. No. You got to do what he say do with the gift. Not what you want to do. Not what you got visions of doing. You, not what you got in your imagination to be. But you got to do what he say do. It's sobering tonight, huh? Yes, it is. Amen. Glory to God. Okay, Bishop Reed, I don't want you walking in the vanity of your mind. Having the understanding darkened. Okay. Being, uh, alien, mm -hmm. being alienated from the life of God mm -hmm. through the ignorance that is in them mm -hmm. because of the blindness of their heart. See, whenever you don't obey God, you blind. You can't see. You can't see spiritually. See, because the moment you disobey God, you're in darkness. And I don't care how smart you were in the scriptures. Because, see, the moment you start making your own way, you become blind to spiritual things. Read. Who, being past feelings, uh -huh. have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work uncleanness with greediness. Uh -huh. But you have not so learned Christ. Okay, now he said, now all of these things, that's not in Christ. None of this stuff, none of this vanity is in Christ. There's no vanity in Christ. There's no vanity of the mind. Not walking in your, the vanity of your mind. In other words, glory to God, you, <laughs> you are not calling the shots here. See, this is where people are going to get in trouble with God at. I walked a, a, a course with God. I've been walking a course with God many years now, many years, and that course has led me into some hardships, real hardships that people around me just did not understand. But I was hearing from God. I heard God, you see? And, that, and I stayed those courses, I stayed on that course that I was on. And there was some times when I made some mistakes, made some mistakes, glory to God. But the main course that God put me on, I always stayed with that. You know how we sometimes pick flowers by the wayside? I, there was times when I stopped and picked some flowers, you know, went over to get some roses, praise the Lord, and until they start sticking me, the thorns start sticking in me, praise the Lord, and I get back on course. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God, you go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. But that course is not always easy. And sometimes it's gonna going to, it's going, believe me, it's gonna take you out of your comfort zone. It's going to, it, it, <laughs> when you stay that course that God put you on, see, it has to take you out of the comfort of the flesh before you know the power of the spirit. You'll never know the power of the spirit as long as you living in the comfort of the flesh. You don't know what God can do. You don't know what he'll do. You don't know how he'll do it. You don't know when he'll do it because you always giving flesh preeminence. Come on, are y'all hearing God? Amen. You can't give flesh preeminence and, and follow God. 
You can't. And if you, when you, as long as you do, you'll never know the power of the Spirit. And I can't even explain it to you. But there's a power in the Spirit that supersedes anything that you can experience here in the natural. There's a power in the Spirit that makes you confident and certain, sure, and make you want nothing out of this world, nothing from this world. Absolutely nothing. That's the power of the Spirit, but you'll never know that until you give over to the Spirit and, 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 and make the flesh, take the flesh out of the position of preeminence. And if, what am I saying? Oh, I'm not, I'm not accusing this body. Who putting them in preeminence? The soul. You're giving yourself preeminence. What you want. You want to be comfortable. You want to be secure. <coughs> Glory to God. You can't serve God without being a risk taker. You can't, you can't serve him without being a risk taker. You can't. You got to be a risk taker to serve God. You, you get glory to God. God will tell you to go do something. You'll be like, what? Yeah. Yes. And that's your reasonable service. That's your reasonable service. That's nothing special. Are y'all hearing God? Because it's not about what you want to do. You are here as a witness to what he is doing. It's not about you. See, once you get, once, once salvation comes, it's no longer about you at all. You have no rights. You don't have any rights. You don't call any shots. Are y'all hearing God? You don't call any shots. You don't tell, you don't, you, you're not going to do what? Are you going to do what? Who told you you're going to do that? Did God tell you to do that? Is that what God calling for from you? See, that's, see, 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 that's what's wrong with the church now. Preachers uh, are making it up as they go. They design in their own courses. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. No. See, because when you, when you walk after the Spirit, when you walk after the Spirit, you don't have any say-so. None. You have no say-so. You know what? You know what? You know what I'm standing here thinking now? You know what I'm standing here thinking, Dr. Kelly? I don't want you to get to heaven and God say, why didn't you listen to what Doc told you? I don't want you to get to heaven and, 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 and God say, didn't you hear what my servant said? Why do you insist on doing things your way? Why didn't you repent at that moment and say, God, take over? Just take over. I repent for usurping authority over your body. I repent for peeping out in the world, glory to God, and, 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 and going back like a dog to his vomit by, oh, I didn't go back to the club, didn't go back to the drinking, didn't go back to the smoking, but I went back to my way. My way. I don't want, I don't want you to get to heaven and God say, didn't you hear Wednesday night? I was talking to you then. I was saying repent. Stop living, giving yourself preeminence. You cannot be preeminent and walk after the Spirit. Can't do it. The Bible says deny yourself. Are y'all hearing God? Read, Bishop. <laughs> if so be that you have heard him mm -hmm. and have been taught by him mm -hmm. as the truth is in Jesus. Now, he teaching that. He teaching. He teaching right now. Right now, Jesus teaching us. He teaching me. He teaching you. Tonight. This moment. It's the Lord that's teaching us. 
if you if you're not if you're not wise enough, huh? To not see me after the flesh, you'll know Jesus teaching us. Yes. You'll know Jesus teaching right now. He said, you've been taught by him. And let me tell you something that I know. I know that God's word don't go out and return, boy. Somebody grabbing a hold of it. Somebody grabbing a hold of this. Somebody sitting there saying, Lord, I repent right now. Somebody already done repented. Some, someone has already said, Lord, forgive me because I've been taken over. I've been, do, I've been doing what I want to do, but God, forgive me. Somebody already said that already. Jesus teaching us. Are y'all hearing it? Read, Bishop. That you put off concerning the former conversation, mm -hmm. the old man, mm -hmm. which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Okay. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That, now, now notice what he's saying here. He's saying you've already put off the old man. See now, 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 Mr. Soul and Mr. Body. See, before the body, before, before salvation, soul was in the body. And the, soul, the body was all corrupt, wasn't it? Soul was corrupt, body corrupt. He said, you put off this, the conversation of the old man. That means lifestyle. You put off this lifestyle of the old man. You put him off. How did you put it off? Because you put him off. You took off. You, hello. He was taken off. Are you hearing him? He was taken off. And you were placed in the spirit. So things have changed. Now, there's been a positional change here. There's been a positional change. The old man is dead. He's dead. You put him off. He dead. He can't live no more. Hmm? Now, you know the scripture that said mortify. Mortify the deeds of the flesh. What does mortify mean? And there's another definition too. Keep dead. Keep dead. He already dead, keep him dead. Keep dead. Mortify. Destroy, totally destroy the deeds of the flesh. In other words now, don't now, don't come back after salvation, Mr. Soul, and peep into the world and decide you want to experience some things, and then those things that you want to experience now, you're going to usurp authority, quench the spirit, grieve the Holy Ghost, and take this body into what you want it to go into. He said, don't do that. Well, now you're living out of the vanity of your mind. Because now you're using Christ's body to fulfill your desires. You're giving yourself preeminence here. And you push Christ back. Quenched him. Grieving him. Are you, get, are you seeing this? Bless the Lord. Thank you, fellas. Amen. Well, no, just hang, hang tough. Hang tough. Hang tough. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Read, Bishop. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's your soul. Be renewed in it. How? Look at that colon there. You see that colon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That means I'm going to explain to you how. Mm -hmm. Semicolon. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. And that you put on the new man, mm -hmm. which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, this is what you got to deal with. See, now this scripture right here. Preachers didn't preach this to us right. They didn't preach this to us right. They didn't preach this right. Then too many of them preach it anyway. But when it was preached, it wasn't preached like, like it said in here. Read that verse again, Bishop. And that you put on the new man. Okay, this new man, this, this new man, remember the soul was taken out of this body? Hmm? This new man that you put on, the new man, which what? Which is created. Which after who? After God. After God? After God? Is what? Created in righteousness and true holiness. Now watch this. 
When they took the soul, when Jesus took the soul out of the body, what happened to the body? Thank you, sir. It died. You know, I had a vision. Did I tell y'all about the vision I had of the death experience? Glory to God. I had a vision just before. When was it? When was it, Anessa? It was before we came? Last week. I came Monday, so it had to be Saturday or Sunday night, one of those nights. I had a vision, saints. I, something happened to me. It wasn't a vision. Something happened to me. I laid down. I laid down. I was laying in the bed. And uh, my associate was standing next to the bed. I was in the bed. I was lying on the bed. I wasn't up under any cover or anything, but I was lying on the bed. And this, my associate was standing next to the bed. She always see to me getting, making sure I'm comfortable or, you know, she waits until I'm, actually wait until I'm gone to bed before she even go to bed. And she's standing by the bed. And I'm supposed to be asleep, I guess, I don't know. But suddenly, my spirit began to leave my body. Now, I've had out-of-body experiences before. I've, I've been taken out of the body and taken up to heaven. I've been taken out of the body and taken into hell. I've had those experiences before, but this was different. This was different. Come over this way a little bit. Yes, yes, sir, right there. Th this, my spirit began to leave like this. It began to come down like this. Instead of coming up, it began to just slide down. And it see, and I could, and when it was sliding down, my feet were off the bed. At, le at least I thought they were. And I was, thought I was gonna fall on the floor. So I, I began to yell out to her, Colleen, help me, I'm, I'm falling. I'm falling, help me, I'm falling off the bed. She couldn't hear me. I was talking with my spirit, and she could not hear me. And my, because my feet now have come out of my body. My legs have come out of my body. The spirit, my spiritual legs, have come out of my body, and they hanging over, they about to fall, and I'm thinking I'm falling. And then now, so the top of me, my spirit, was down here in my legs. And I'm like, I realize, wait a minute, something's wrong. And I'm laying there, and I'm trying to move my arms. My arms was down inside my body, and I'm trying to move. And I couldn't move my arms. And I couldn't move my mouth. And I realized I'm trying to talk to her, but my mouth is not moving. I realized that. My mouth is not moving, and I can't move my, my arms. I can't, I can't catch myself. I can't, I can't do anything. I can't move any of my upper extremities. I couldn't move anything from my waist up. Couldn't move. And... And I'm like, I'm, but I'm falling. Then I realized my spirit was coming out of my body. And the Lord was letting me know. He said, now, see that part of the body where the spirit wasn't? It was dead. It couldn't move. It had no feelings. It, could, it had no mobility. It couldn't, it couldn't talk. It couldn't see, it couldn't do anything. Are you hearing? It couldn't do anything because the spirit had left the upper part of my body and was coming out this way. And she said, she said she looked down at me and she saw something was going on wrong. So she said, Jesus, you, she preached that you in this is your flesh, you're in this body, so you need to fix this. And when she said that, I, I felt myself go back up in my body. And I went, Ugh. then I could move, I could talk. Are you hearing God? 
God was confirming this message yes. in me. He was confirming it that the body without the spirit is dead. And he wants he want you to he want me to drive that home to you. So you'll never from this moment on blame your flesh for sin. Because your body is not sinful. Now I want you to read that verse again. And I want you to tell me what it's saying here. Look at this. And that you put on the new man. Who is the new man? Stand up, Jesus. And where is he at? In the Holy Ghost. Okay, so, so, so now this new man, see, once he took the soul out, right? Took the soul out of the body, body dead, right? So who gets the body up? Then there's a scripture that said the same spirit, Romans 8, that raised Christ from the dead should do what? Quicken. Quicken, Quicken means to do what? Make alive. So now this spirit here comes and quicken this body alive. Now watch this. Jesus is in the flesh. That's the new man. Now notice what you just read. Read it again. And that you put on the new man. Now that's the new man right there. Mm -hmm. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. I want somebody that's born again to say, my body is the new man. If you're born again, say it where the devil get mad. My body. My body. Now notice what he says. It's created what? It's created in true, in righteousness and true holiness. Your body? Your body is now created in Righteousness and true holiness, how could it be evil? How could the nature of the devil be in that flesh? Come on now. How is it possible for the devil to be in there when God said this new man is created after God in righteousness and true holiness? That means your body does not desire any sin. That means that your body is created after God in righteousness. How could it be anything else with Jesus in it? Come on. Are you seeing this? This is the most important thing. Are you seeing this? So Thomas, you getting this? Brother Thomas? This is important. This is important because th this right here destroys that false doctrine of dual nature. This can't be the new man. Soul can't be the new man because he told his soul to put him on. Come on. Told the soul to put him on. Didn't tell the soul to put him on. Put on that new man. In other words, when you get in here, you stay buried in him. Don't you now usurp authority. Don't you now look out in the world. Don't start peeping. Because when you do, I think I got a scripture in here. It says that all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So Mr. Soul, when you look in here, you looking out in the world, you want something out in that world. There's nothing in that world but the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And he said, now, if your eye be single, yes, yes. Huh? Yes. then this whole body will stay full of life. Yes, sir. Why? Because the scripture tells us in the fourth chapter of Corinthians that we have this treasure in an earthen vessel. And it says that the light, 
that was shining in the face of Jesus Christ is now shed abroad in our heart. Glory to God. He's saying this light of Jesus is not only shining in our soul and lighting up our soul and making us the eternal light of God, but it's also lighting up the flesh. Our whole body is full of light. He said, now, if you, if you want to keep it that way, don't peep out here in the world and desire something from the world. He said, stay in the spirit. You've been living in the spirit, now walk in the spirit. Let this spirit, let, because this man, this man, this flesh now got a new mind. It's the mind of Christ. He said, now let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be also in you. Huh? Keep that mind. Don't peep out here. Because when you do, he said, if your eye is not single, your whole body is going to be full of darkness. Huh? And notice what he said now. Because, see, with Jesus in us, the body is full of light. But he said, if you, if, you're, if, if you look out in the world and you want something from the world, the body now gets full of darkness. He said, and if the light be in you, be dark. How great is that darkness? He said, this light of Christ that's in you, if you now bring in darkness, how great is that darkness? Glory to God, how, how great it is. Because you got to, glory to God, you know what he's you know he really saying? Glory to God, do you know what it takes to override Jesus and just do what you want to do? There are times when people do us wrong and God say, oh, just forget that. Just forget that and just love anyhow. And you'll just override it and just be mad and, and talking. Just keep yam, 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 yam about it. Glory to God. And God done told you, forget it. Glory, you done override. How great is that darkness? Because you're overriding the light of God. Are y'all hearing him? Are you hearing God? Are you hearing him now? See, I... This is what I want. Now look at, glory to God, look at um, my, my, my time running out. Hallelujah. Okay. Now watch this here. St. Saint, Saint Luke 9.23, just to get it on the record. Nine twenty three. it's on page uh, 10. On page 10 in your book, the last scripture on page 10. St. Luke 9, 23. Mm -hmm. And he said to them all, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Okay, if you're going to follow me, you got to deny yourself. In other words, Mr. Soul, stay here in the spirit. When you look out there, because the devil, you don't even have to look, the devil gonna bring you some stuff. You don't have to go looking for nothing, he gonna bring it to you. Amen? And guess what, God gonna let him. He gonna let him. Cause he's not gonna save us and put us in a bubble. He's not gonna put us where the devil just can't, take, can't say nothing to us. No, he's gonna give him access. He said, now if you, if you would just stay in the spirit, read that verse again. He said, deny yourself. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. Deny and yourself. If you're going to come after me, you must first do what? Deny yourself. Deny yourself. So he's saying, even when the devil bring temptation to you, when the devil bring that temptation, resist it. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. In other words, I can't do that. That people come telling me all the time, said, Dr. Banks, you know you're the head of these ministries, and, and with all those churches, you could do this. And you could, I said, no, I can't. I can't do that. Mm-mm. Because -mm. all that stuff you're talking about caters to my flesh. Huh? It caters to my flesh. I'm not here to build me. I'm here to build God a house That's to live right. in. Amen. To build God a people. Right. Are you hearing God? Amen. Deny yourself. Look at this other scripture. 
Glory to God. I want to get these scriptures on the book before my time. I got two more minutes here. Amen. Look at uh, Luke, I'm sorry, Romans 12 and 1. Scripture right above that one, Bishop. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, mm -hmm. by the mercies of God, mm -hmm. that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable present service. Present your body. In other words, God is saying now you live in the spirit. When you let Jesus live through this flesh, as far as you're concerned, it's a sacrifice to you. See, it's a living sacrifice from your perspective because you're denying yourself the pleasures that, flesh, that, that living out, amen, things in the flesh could grant you. You're denying yourself of that. So you're making it a living sacrifice. It's alive, yes, but it's alive unto God. It's alive unto God. So I, there's some things that I would do I can't do. I'm not going to do. I'm, make, I'm, I'm sacrificing that to God. And some things we might want to do may not even be sin, but it's just not expedient for us to do it. Are, are, you, are you understanding God? Amen. So it's a living sacrifice. Glory to God. There's another scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yes. Romans 6. Romans 6, 13. Scripture above that one. Look, at, look what it says here. Romans 6, 13. Mm -hmm. Neither yield your members as an instrument of righteousness unto sin, mm -hmm. but yield yourselves unto God mm -hmm. as those that are alive from the dead. Okay, now, do you see that? That's the scripture that I wanted you to note, take note of. When I said, remember I said the body was over here dead? Yes. That's your scripture right there. The body was over here dead, but he said now, Yield your members unto God as those that are what? Alive. alive. He's talking about your members, yes. which is your body. Your body now is alive from the dead and yield your members as instruments of what? Righteousness. righteousness. Why, can your, why are your members the instruments of righteousness? Because this new man now that was raised by Jesus Christ was created after God in righteousness and true what? And true what? Holy. Say, my body, my body is, holy. is holy. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. Oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. My body. It's time. <laughs> this is the question God would ask. Did he reach anybody tonight? Is there anybody that's saying, God, I repent? Somebody might need to run to this altar and say, God, I want to be saved because I, I need that. I don't have, I, I, don't, I don't want to preach this and don't give an opportunity for salvation. And maybe somebody say, I need saving. Hallelujah. And I'm going to get to this altar. I'm not going to beg you to come, glory to God, because if you want Jesus, you'll run up here. Glory to God. Nobody has to drag you. You'll run if you want Jesus. Amen. If, if, if the word has, 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 has found you, you'll run. Glory to God. Amen. To this altar and say, I want Jesus tonight. I don't want to leave here unsaved. Glory to God. Amen. I, I just want to be saved. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, if, and there may be somebody else that says, you know what? I need to repent. I just need to honor God. I need to honor God. Let her by. Let her by. She wants, she wants salvation. Let her by. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. If you want salvation, come on. Just, just get up and come on to this altar and say, God, I need salvation tonight. I need you to save me. I don't want to leave here unsaved. I don't want to go out of this door unsaved. And when you get on your knees, glory to God, can I get some ministers to come lead these young people to the Lord here? Praise the Lord. Some of you young ministers. Some of you young ministers. Come on, uh, Annette. I mean, uh, uh, Daniel, y'all come on. Praise the Lord. Charmaine, y'all come on. Amen. What we got? What we got? Daniel, come take this young man. I need to, uh, Anesta, come take this young lady here. Where's she at? 
Oh, she got her. Oh, I need this. Oh, Charmaine, come get her. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Saints, don't turn, don't turn it off. Please, please don't turn it off. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, there may be somebody else that's saying, you know, I heard this word tonight. And I need to repent of my ways because I've been usurping authority over the Holy Ghost. And I heard God say, I need to repent. And saints, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be ministers. You can be pastors. You can be archbishops. You can be a, whatever you are, evangelists. But if God spoke to you and said, you have usurped authority over him by doing things your way, or giving your flesh any type of preeminence, then you need to come and repent. And say, God, I repent. I give this over to you. I give my heart back to you, God. I let you lead me and guide me. Lord, I'm not going to, I'm not going to wrestle with you anymore. But I'm going to honor you by coming to the altar and giving myself over to you. I'm going to, I'm going to submit to you tonight. Glory to God. We got time. If you want to come and repent of, of taking preeminence, giving yourself preeminence instead of the Holy Spirit, this is time for you to come and say, God, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Because I've thought about myself and what I'm going to feel and what I'm going to do and what I'm going to be. Glory to God. God, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I don't want to leave here, glory to God, dishonoring you anymore. Glory to God. Gentle Savior, oh Lord, hear my heart, oh Christ, oh Lord, why? right there where you are. Those of you that are in churches, Jamaica, Texas, Freeport, Mississippi, Trinidad, wherever you are, Canada, make yourself an altar right there. Get out your seat and fall on your face before God and repent. Those of you that are watching at home, repent right now. Say, God, I've had my own way. I've had my own way. But I repent right now. And I give this body back to you as a living sacrifice. You created it after God in righteousness and true holiness. It's been brought alive from the dead. And God is yours. Use it as you see fit. In Jesus' name. I'm fully saved.
name. Somebody praise his name. Somebody praise God's name. Dare you to praise his name. Holy is that name. I don't know what you came to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you came to do. I don't know what you come to do. Tell you and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you.
a song I love to, to hear a song praise the Lord I don't even know about it. it's called every praise y'all know that y'all sing that here Amen. somebody need to sing it
Cántame. wonderful savior he's just so good praise you jesus nothing like him nothing like him there's nothing to even be compared with god hallelujah saints don't you see how light you feel it's the knowledge of the lord to just lift the burdens up off of us some ought to jump to their feet and say i'm free good god almighty hallelujah Woo! The devil don't like it Woo! Woo! Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Woo! Hey! Devil don't like 
it. Come on, give God some glory in here. Woo! Yes. The word has made us free. Woo! Come on, Zion. Come on, give our God some glory. Hey! Woo! Woo! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Woo! Jesus. See, the devil don't like it when you praise him. The devil don't like it when you give God some glory. But I'm free tonight because of the word of God. Come on, let's give him one more minute of, give him a dance. Come on, somebody, if you don't know how to dance, just jump. Just give him a good old Holy Ghost bounce. Woo! Somebody want to run, run. Yes, sir. Woo! Hey! 
and high set me free. I could dance, 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 dance all night. Come on, let's put our hands together for our God. Every praise is to our God. Y'all feel it in the back back there? If you love him, don't you shout out something back there. That's all right. Woo! Hallelujah. Well, it's offering time. Let's see that same exuberance that you had just a few minutes ago. Come on, it's offering time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're here tonight to receive an offering from you to the Lord. And as we have taken every part of this service seriously, we ask tonight that you take your giving seriously. Hallelujah. We're going to give you a few minutes to bring your minds and your hearts in because this is worship. Our giving is unto who? Amen. Hallelujah. And so we want you to be sober minded that you may have God speak to you what to give. Wasn't the word wonderful tonight? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand praise for the word. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and, and Tanya, if you would just do something for me, I don't understand about the online giving. So will you just come and do that part and I'll finish up. Amen. Let's receive our pastor Tanya. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It's been a good night. Amen. Hallelujah. Those of you online, we want you to participate in the offering as well. Simply click on donations, follow the promptings. If you have been blessed, amen, and if you would like to continue to receive these broadcasts, please help us support the ministry. Click on donations, follow the promptings. Online church, if you're visiting with us for the first time, just click on that button, mark donation, and follow the rest of the promptings uh, to give your offering at this time. 
As always, we appreciate your continued giving. Amen. We appreciate your support down through the years. It's because of your generous giving that makes it possible for us to uh, be able to bring these broadcasts to you. Amen. So those of you online, click on donations, follow the promptings. If you would like to give by credit card, please see Sister Patricia or Annette. Pastor Annette or Sister Patricia. Amen. We thank Pastor Tanya for that. Now, there are some beautiful ladies on the floor in red. They're called hospiticians. And they are here to serve you on tonight. Amen. So if you need an envelope, raise your hand, and they're going to make sure that you get one. Please put something in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel like I'm home. Mm. Hallelujah. I have enjoyed myself this week. Uh, Dr. Banks, when I saw your dance, it took me back to the old time church. Amen. I was going to jump at which, but I didn't want them guys to make me sit back down. Amen. This one right here, if you're pretty big, amen. Hallelujah. But there's a time we used to just praise the Lord. I remember before we even had this kind of word, praise kept us, Tanya. Before we knew how to exegete his word, before God started speaking to us, we gave, we gave him a praise. And we didn't know nothing else. We knew how to give him a praise. Amen. And now our praise is for real. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Has everybody been served that need to be served? Amen. So we're going to follow the protocol of this house. So at this time, we're going to ask our hospitations if they would assist you in coming around and bringing God an offering. Get a great offering in your hand tonight. This was a great service. It was a great word. It was a liberating word. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we're going to follow the prompting of the hospitations.
if you know it's that's all right, clap your hands and tell him thank you. Now I need to ask you one more question before we pray. Is everybody satisfied with your giving? Have you allowed the Lord to speak to you of what you give? Amen. Has everyone been served that needs to be served? Amen. We're going to ask that you lift your hearts up to God. Father, we thank you for these gifts of love on tonight. We thank you, Father, for your people so generously giving into your ministry, into your word, Father. Father God, we ask you, Lord, that you would continue to bless them, God, that they may have seed, God, to give into every offering that you require, Father. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you would open up streams of income and finances, God, that this kingdom that you've given us charge of, that we can build it. And we know your kingdom is people, Father. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. If all hearts and minds are clear, one more time, just lift that hands up to God and tell him thank you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord has met us here tonight. And I'm trusting that he's going to meet us tomorrow night. He put a word in my spirit. And I just really want to share it. But he's doing it systematically. He's taking us higher and higher every night. Bless the Lord. And I just thank him. Amen. And I appreciate him so much. And I appreciate you for receiving his word. Because... It's a dangerous thing to turn a deaf ear to God. Amen. We thank God for all of our out-of-town guests. Amen. Pastor Miles coming all the way from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Praise the Lord. She has to leave to tomorrow. Amen. She's an attorney and duty calls. Amen. But one thing I can say that she tries to make every conference she can. Praise the Lord. And glory to God, she'll be leaving us tomorrow, and I think Pastor Ricky and Don had to leave. Amen. Their daughter's birthday is up there in Orlando, so they, while they're in the States, they're going to go up there. Praise the Lord. But I just appreciate those who came from long distances just to be with us. And I'm enjoying, amen, the roles, praise the Lord. They did an awesome job of hosting tonight. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> And our newlywed bishop is here with us. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> he over there. Yeah, he can dance now. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise him. I saw Karen today. I said, you pregnant yet? Karen say, what? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, you know, married people get pregnant. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Look at her just smiling. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. God is just good. Saints, yesterday, things just moving. So sometimes when I'm in the, caught up in the spirit, you forget natural things sometimes. But I think yesterday was Amy's birthday. And we didn't, we didn't acknowledge that, praise the Lord. Glory to God. But Helen, I want to ask you to sing happy birthday to my secretary. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, Miss Amy. Come on, Amy. You're special. Come on, let's give God praise for Amy. Amy is one of those people in the ministry I heard a preacher refer to at one time as a monkey wrench. It just fits and moves wherever you need it to. Amy is one of those people. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, yeah, 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 yeah. 
got a birthday and some other people got some birthdays. Sarah Stewart, yeah, Sarah's birthday was yesterday too. She's 29 again. Happy birthday to all of our October people. It's a lot of them in this ministry. Yes. All right, yes. Saints, I have the new CD tonight. I picked up the box on my way to church. I want y'all to get one, but then I want y'all to go to Walmart and get one too. So anyway, I just want you to let, let you know I have them tonight. Doc, any more announcements? Anything else? All right, let us stand to our feet. We have been thoroughly blessed. Y'all tried to turn this into a shut-in tonight, but I don't mind. Amen. Surely the Spirit of the Lord was in this place tonight. God showed up and just showed out in our lives. We thank God for being so faithful. Every time I hear God speak the word and open up our understanding so that we can understand what God is saying, I feel so blessed because God don't have to do that. But he has favored us. I keep telling y'all God has favored us. Favor ain't what people think it is. This real favor right here. When God can sit you down and speak to you and explain his heart and his mind to us, that's the favor of the Lord. So let's go out of here tonight hiding that word in our hearts because uh, those that are born of God do not commit sin. Amen. 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 Uh, I've said that kind of weak. Those that are born of God don't commit sin. We'd be scared to say that, but that's who we are tonight. Father, we thank you for these, your people. We thank you for your blessings and coming to see about us one more time tonight. We thank you for allowing us to hear you and to feel you and to see you tonight one more time. And as we depart from this place, but not from your presence, we pray that the angels of the Lord will encamp about us, give us traveling mercies to make it to our destinations, and that we will find our homes in peace. We lift up our apostle before you right now, God, and we pray that you would strengthen her, strengthen her body, God, that she can complete the assignment that you've given her, even on this week, God. Allow your word to flow from her freely, God. Send your word with grace, yet with power, God that your word will affect our hearts. Go past minds, go past those walls of defense and all of the traditional mindsets and the, and the doctrines of men, God, and allow your word to penetrate our very, the very core and the essence of our being, that we can leave this place changed and better for you. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your people. In Jesus' name, hug somebody and say, he was here one more time. Praise the Lord, and we will not the pastoral meeting for tomorrow has been rescheduled for Friday morning. The pastoral meeting for tomorrow, Friday morning at 9 o'clock.